Hello, this is Amy from MFM, and I am here to model least common multiple using these virtual unifix cubes. Now, least common multiple is the smallest multiple that two numbers or two or more than two numbers share in common. So first, let's talk about the word multiple. Now, the word multiple has the word multi in it, meaning many or more than one. And I like to think of multiple in math as the number that you're counting by. So I'm just going to write counting by a number. So for example, the multiples of two, just to start off, a couple multiples of two, if I count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, and then the list goes on and on. So if I wanna find the least common multiple between two numbers, I wanna find the first multiple that those two numbers share in common. So for example, let's say I want to find the least common multiple of the number four and the number three. So I'm going to write up here, now, least common multiple, you'll see this abbreviated with LCM. So I'm going to write, find the LCM of 4 and 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these different unifix cubes. I'm going to start with this red-pink color, and I'm going to first put down three cubes. Now, when I get to the fourth cube, I'm going to make it a different color to make it stand out. And then I'm going to write the number four on that fourth cube. And then I'm just going to keep counting by fours. I'm actually going to move this down so that it doesn't run into my cubes. Let's keep counting by four. So five, six, seven. When I get to the next multiple of four, I'm going to color code it yellow. You can use any colors you want. So there's eight. And I'm just going to keep going the next one here. So 9, 10, 11. When I get to the fourth one, I'm going to color that yellow again. So there's 12. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with 3. So when I'm finding the least common multiple of two numbers, or like I said, maybe even three numbers, and I'll show you later why you might be finding least common multiple of three numbers. But I'm just starting with two numbers. I like to start with the larger number. And I'm, that's because we're going to run into the smallest multiple that both of these numbers share in common sooner than if I start with the smaller multiple. So then I'm going to go down to three. and I'm going to start counting by threes. So one, two, and then I'm going to use that yellow cube and I hit the first multiple of three, which is three. And I'm going to look up here and see if so far, there are any multiples that I have in common with the multiples of four, and I don't see a three. When I skip count by fours, I don't ever reach the number three. So I'm just going to keep going with my multiples of three. So there's four, five, six, as I get to the next multiple of three. And I look up here, nope, I don't have a six for a multiple of four. So, so far, nothing in common. Seven, eight, nine, still nothing in common. So I just keep going with the three, 10, 11, 12. Okay, we'll take a look here and ah, here we go. There's the first multiple that four and three share in common, 12. So I can write that the LCM or the least common multiple of four and three equals 12. Now you might be asking, why do I need to know this? Where's least common multiple going to come up in math that will help me? And one place you will find least common multiple is when you are adding or subtracting fractions or mixed numbers that have different size pieces or different denominators. So let me show you an example of that. So here are two fractions two-thirds plus one-fourth. And I'm going to show you a model. So here's two-thirds plus a fourth. And as you can see, don't have the same size pieces. This is cut into thirds, 
or I have two thirds, and these are cut into fourths with one fourth. I can't add these together because they're not the same size, and they're also not the same color. So if I wanted to name them, I there's really no name for three and four together. I don't I don't know what to call that third third fourths that doesn't go together. Also, there's no name for orange plus yellow, orange yellow orange. So as you can see, you have to have the same color, the same size fraction piece in order to add your fractions. So this is where least common multiple comes in handy. So I take a look at my size pieces or my denominator. I have thirds and I have fourths. So I can use that least common multiple to help me out. Now I remember that the least common multiple of three and four is 12. So I'm gonna use that 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create equivalent fractions for two thirds and one fourth. And I'm gonna turn my two thirds into twelfths, and I'm going to turn my one fourth into twelfths as well. And let me move this over a little bit. Okay, and now I can see that two thirds, which is right here, is equivalent or equal, or takes up the same amount of space as. 8 twelfths down here. So 2 thirds equals 8 twelfths because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1 fourth equals 1, 2, 3 twelfths. So now both of my fractions have the same size pieces or the same denominators, and I can actually get rid of the fourth and the thirds. Let's do some erasing just to make this look a little bit neater. And I can get rid of two thirds and one fourth because I found equivalent fractions. And now I can add my two fractions. Eight twelfths plus three twelfths. My answer is going to be in twelfths. And eight that I have right here, I can move down below the equal sign. I'm gonna to join together with the three twelfths that I have right here. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 11 twelfths. And this is my answer. As you can see, that is one example where least common multiple came in handy. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that sometimes you have to find the least common multiple of three numbers. And that will happen if you are adding three or subtracting three fractions or mixed numbers at one time. For example, let's say you were adding one half and one third and two fourths. Now I take a look at my pieces and here's a model. I have one half plus one third plus two fourths. I do not have the same size pieces. I'm not able to add these as they are right now. And I can't turn the halves into thirds, nope, and I can't turn the thirds into halves, and I can't turn the fourths into thirds. I can turn the fourths into halves, but I would only be able to use halves as my denominator if I could also turn this one third into halves, which I can't. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm gonna to have to find the least common multiple of all three of these denominators. So I want the LCM of two, three, and four. So this is an example where you would find the least common multiple of three numbers, two, three, and four. So if I wanted to do that, go back here to my tile or my cubes, and I already have four and three written down. So I don't want to erase that. I would just have to find the multiples of two and see if I would also use 12. So I'm going to count by two. So one, this next one, I color yellow because that's a multiple of two. And then three, four. 
so far. Let's see, I share a comment. I share the fourth in common, but I have to share it with the three too. So that, or not, not the fourth, but the four. <laughs> so I have to share with all of them. And then I have five, six. I share a six in common with the three, but not with the four. So that's not going to work. Seven, eight. I share an eight in common with the four, but not the three. So I have to keep going until I find the least common multiple of all three of these numbers. Nine, 10. Oh, don't, I don't have a 10 for three or four. 11, 12. There we go. Actually, 12 is the least common multiple of all three of those numbers. So the LCM of four, three, and two is 12. Thank you for joining me. And this was an example of how you can use virtual unifix cubes to model finding the least common multiple, which is very helpful for when you get to adding and subtracting mixed numbers or fractions with different size pieces or different denominators. Thank you for joining me and I will see you later in upcoming videos.